Well, you join us here on the Installer Plaza, and uh, we're going to have a chat here because a recent study uh, in 2022 found that an incredible 78%, I'm going to say that again, 78% of tradeswomen face discrimination in their day-to-day -day work. That cannot be right. Now, the industry is becoming more inclusive, as we know, but only a small, small percentage of tradeswomen uh, work on the tools compared to tradesmen. Now, I'm joined here by Hattie Hassan, who we know, old friends from Stopcox. Hattie Hassan, MBE, oh, it yes. has to be said. Oh, my Thank word. Uh, bow, bow to MBEs. And Claire Harding, who's brand director on the tools. Welcome, uh, Thank ladies. Thank you very much for joining us today. We're going to have a chat on really how we can work together to become more inclusive. I'd like to start off, that 78% is incredible. Um, tell me more about the Women on the Tools report, whoever wants to talk in. So for the women nice and close, hold the microphone out. So for the Women on the Tools report, we actually interviewed 474, bit, yeah. 474 tradeswomen. Right. Um, so we had a big, a big group of tradeswomen that gave us their thoughts and opinions. And yeah, sadly, 78% said they experienced discrimination in their role. We also did some research with consumers to ask them, ask women generally, if they would consider a career in construction. And actually, around 22% said they would, and they would be interested in joining the industry. 22%, which is ironic when it was 78%. But, but so it work um, not just in installing, but across trades you're talking about, this was? Across trades, yeah. Right. So the, the research was across all different types of trades, tradeswomen. Um, so there were some similarities that people kind of experienced the same situations, whether they were going into residential homes or they were out on, on building sites. There was a lot of um, similar examples. But then on the positive side, when we asked them about job satisfaction, and in particular around self-employed tradeswomen, um, there were really high 66% experienced great job satisfaction from being a self-employed tradeswoman. So it's clear that despite there being a lot of obstacles and a lot of challenges still out there, the women that are doing it and going out there and making careers out of this are really enjoying what they do. So the other side of that coin is 34% weren't enjoying it. So what were the reasons they weren't enjoying it? Were there any key or particular reasons that came to the fore? Yeah, absolutely. Um, pay was, was a big issue. Yeah. So we asked around pay disparity um, and unfortunately that number wasn't great either. So um, more women were paid less than men um, than we'd like to see. And also some of the basics we still aren't getting right. So we asked about kind of basic facilities like access to a female toilet on site and 22% said they had access to a female toilet. So wow. even some of the basics still aren't right. Um, which is causing people a lack of job satisfaction. It's such a male-dominated uh, topic, isn't it? A, 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 and business, I suppose. It's going to take quite a time. You know, I, There's an expression, once you have them by the balls, their hearts and minds will follow. And I think that's actually quite true. And, and, go on, Hattie. Maybe that's why there's not so many women. Well, maybe <laughs> it is. You can't talk about it with they stock boxes, you're going to have your company. Oh, yeah. But, but, it, it, but it, it's, so, it, it's so important. And how does the industry work to make it more inclusive? Right, well I've got, obviously David, you know I never stop talking Just about hold this. hold the microphone like that. This is what I talk about all the time. I know. So, <laughs> well, I'm brilliantly. I, 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 thank you very much. Uh, well, one of the things that I would say is, um, we need more uh, role models. So we need women to be visible in their work. We need companies to um, encourage women to come into them. Yeah. Uh, and there are several ways they can do that. One way is obviously making facilities available, yep. making the environment a bit more uh, inclusive. Uh, we work a lot with companies to, to uh, consult about that. And, once, uh, and also they need to work on keeping those women. One of the things that happens is women may come in. So there'll be a campaign. A company will get a couple of women in. Those women will get, be brilliant at their job. They'll be promoted. So they'll go from being visible to them being invisible. And there's no women to come up underneath that. So we need to create a sustainable methodology of keeping women in the industry and continuously bringing new ones in. I then we don't have to keep going back to square one. I, I completely get that. I, I, my wife is a psychologist, a corporate psychology. I think I'm a bit of a case study for her, to be honest <laughs> with you. She keeps making notes. But I, 
she does a lot in the corporate arena around uh, unconscious bias and so on and so on. But a lot of companies are saying, right, we're going to do unconscious bias. But it's a tick box exercise. How much are you finding that? Because it, you're, you're sighing, and I, and I understand, because it really is. And she sighs. She comes over and says, they're not going to do anything as a result of what we've done today. For them, it's just tick the box, I've done that one. And that's difficult. Yeah, that's really, that's really difficult, because I deliver unconscious bias yep. talks to companies as well. And you'll notice out of a well, room... Well, you do, but you're a woman. I do. I do, yeah. But that's the point, isn't it? That's, well, I mean, the thing is about unconscious bias. It's not just men who have that. Everyone has it. Yes, exactly. We no, all no, have I, it. No, I'm kidding. Uh, and, and, uh, I'm, being uncon I'm being consciously being biased. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. <laughs> but um, So one of the things that I noticed out of a huge room of people, there will be two or three people that engage. And those are the people that want to change. Unfortunately, I would prefer if 90% of the people engaged and the 10% were the ones that were never going to change but it's yeah. not like that and you have to keep i think unconscious biases is, is the, the the new way that we've tried to get people to see their own behaviors and perhaps change it to make a better world I, i'm not sure i have this argument with my wife all the time that there is such a thing as unconscious bias because i'm pretty sure a lot of it is conscious well, I think things are unconscious um, until they move into consciousness. Fair enough. Okay, we won't have that argument now because no. I won't win it. I know that. Um, now, there's a National Register of Tradeswomen, isn't there? That's, that's, that's mine you. as well. Yeah, yeah. So are you going to come off the tool, so to speak, and sort of put well, yourself out there? No, no, she's not coming no, off the tool. No. The other day I was looking at my... my it's only 24 I was looking at my room with all my tools in. I was thinking, I'm going to have to have a garage sale get people to go around to make me offers and then I thought well I'm not going to get rid of that I'm not going to get rid of that, that I'm not yeah. going to get not uh, you never know I might need that so who knows if I'll yeah. ever come off the tools okay but the national register T tell me a little bit about that right so um during 2020 during the lockdown uh, in the first month of the lockdown what happened was there was an, a massively increase of women um reporting of domestic violence and abuse and in fact the numbers of women killed by their abusers, by their partners who they were locked in with, went up, like tripled in the first month to what it had been the whole previous year. So now I've got to come out now and say I was actually a victim of domestic abuse. I grew up in an abusive household, so I know what it's like. And I had a word with my mum and we decided that I needed to come out, so to speak. So she said... Whenever we used to have someone come round to our house, your father would get really jealous and cross and angry and we would all suffer for it. In fact, I'd forgotten that. She reminded me. And I thought, and she said, if we had a tradeswoman, perhaps that wouldn't have happened. So it's really got nothing to do with tradesmen or anything like that. It's got to do with what happens in the household, why women or, or whoever might want to choose a tradeswoman. So I thought, let's see if we can make that available for them. You know, and we're always being contacted by organisations that work with abused women who want to find tradeswomen. So we managed to get a, um, a database of 650 tradeswomen. So what we do is when a customer or whoever wants to choose a tradeswoman contacts us, they will ask for the particular trade in their area. If we've got the woman on our list, we'll ask her if she wants to go and do the job. A lot of the time she can. Most of the time I have to say, She's too busy to take the work on. Which is great. Uh, well, it's in, a, in one way. In one way, but in another way, need, it highlights the, yes, the, the lack of tradeswomen. Exactly. And, and so it proves there's a big market for tradeswomen. Absolutely. But there aren't enough tradeswomen at the moment registered. So how do you go about changing that? Well, if you knew the answer to that, I suppose we'd be on well, a desert island somewhere. Well, I, I kind of do know the answer. <laughs> go on. Um, the answer is to get more tradeswomen. That's a simple answer. And there are women coming to us all the time asking us, how do I get into it? You know, I'm trying to find someone. I can't. So I want to do it. How do I get into it? Oh. Now, what we need at the register, actually, is we need brands and companies who support tradeswomen or to, who would want to see more tradeswomen to actually support the register of tradeswomen, which is a not-for-profit, by the way. Um, and then, then perhaps we can point those women in the same way into places that will support them into a career. Claire and, and Hattie, th there has to be some sort of responsibility here from the government, I yes. guess. Um, whoever the government is, doesn't matter what your politics is, but how do you go about, uh, what would you like to see the government do? 
I'd like to see the government nice and close, invest sorry. in education um, so it's a viable option for women at a young age to consider it as a career. I mean, I certainly know when I was back at school, it wasn't even put to me yeah. as something that was available. So well, I, think, I think that's improving, but I think it needs to change. But for me, it goes back to the badge that you're, you're wearing on your, your chest oh, yes. there. We'll talk about that in a minute maybe, but yes. It's about allies. It's about encouraging yeah. men in senior businesses to take it seriously and invest in women. Mm. I'm going to be devil's advocate here. Yep. From the point of view of the government, it's not a vote winner, is it? So how are you going to get them to do it? I mean, it's seriously, it, you know, it, it's a difficult topic to get people to buy into. Yep. Becoming easier, I think, um, from, from when it first started, but it is tough. Um, men have a responsibility to educate, I think, each other here, don't they? Because you're champions out there, you're championing the cause, but actually, you know, that, that old boys club, that old boys network and so on and so forth, that's gone. It should be gone. But it's not yet. And so there's a big responsibility that men have in, the, in this role as well. Yeah, yeah. And um, they do. They do. And, and for, forever, for time immemorial, women have trained their sons in how to behave. Yeah. But now I think it's time for men to teach each other to see something and call it out. Um, it's interesting that that badge you're wearing, which says, I am an ally. Yeah. It, it's a fantastic... Because we were just talking with Installer Magazine, actually, um, over the last few weeks and this morning about something that we are launching, which is to do with men being allies. Um, uh, and we're going to be launching a, a whole kind of website about it. And if men need, men need to educate themselves, it's not about carrying women's bags or opening doors for them. It's much deeper than that. And about how to spot things as well. So there'll be a, they'll, I mean, I, I just think watch this space, watch Installer, because there, there is going to be um, a launch of an ally, ally kind program, of program or yeah. initiative. Yeah. Uh, look, I am old enough and old-fashioned enough. I do open the door for my wife and I do hold a chair for her, but I don't think there's anything wrong with that necessarily. No, I'm not saying there's something wrong with that. I'm saying there's so much more, more to it. More that can be done, exactly. And I, I agree with that 100%. Okay. Um, how can people get more information? What, can they, what do they need to do? How can they find you? Well, they can. Well, you're always around. Well, aren't they can, yeah. Just look up Stop Cox and you'll find me anywhere. Yeah. Stopcox.uk uh, to contact me. To through that you can get to the register of tradeswomen. But if you contact, you want to contact myself or you can contact Micah. So it's Micah M I C A at tra uh, Stopcox.uk. We can get, give you any information you want to you want to get about the register, about how to support, how to sponsor, how to be an ally. Brilliant, Claire. Just to add, we have a Women on the Tours group, yes. which has over 2,000 members on Fantastic. Facebook. So if there are any tradeswomen out there that are looking to, you know, whether it's ask a question or look for support with a peer network in a safe space, that's available for people to join. And, and is there a support network in there? And I'm talk you know what I'm talking about here, because it, psychologically this can be a tough world. And, and how, do you, how do you cope with that? Well, we have um, a Facebook group also, like a private uh, one that's just for tradeswomen. And we have one that's just for plumbers. So just go on Facebook, search for it. Um, also, there is the On The Tools group. But our group is, a, is more like a private group. Um, and there are some stories that get shared on there what, that uh, it's a safe space. Yeah, and that's what I was alluding to, a safe space. And that's so important. And also, you know... Men need safe spaces too, and, and, and everybody does. And it's a fantastic topic, and, and I applaud you for what you're doing. So come and talk to these two. Find them, annoy them, badger them. They will tell you. They won't stop talking, actually. So um, you'll enjoy it. You'll enjoy it. But thank you so much for giving us a little bit of insight. And uh, how many of these have you been to now in store? Oh, every single one. Since 2015? Since it was a shed. So uh, since it was a shed. It was a shed. Well, I mean, what's your impression of this? It's extraordinary, isn't it? I think installer show has gotten incredible and I really really uh, I want to say it, thank you for the girls because you know we've been so supported from by the installer show so yeah I, I want to say thank you on behalf of tradeswomen who know me. Uh, Claire I think you've been maybe to a couple of these have you been surprised by the size of, of this one because it's oh, huge. The scale and the attendance is you know it looks buzzing today so it's it's great to be back in this kind of environment after oh, the yeah. last couple of years yeah. in particular. Oh, Have yes. you visited the double-decker bus bar yet? 
Not oh, I no. didn't know there was a bar. Yeah, there is. There's a double-decker bus bar over there and a burger bar and everything else. Look, I'm an ally, OK? Yes. We want other people to become allies too. So remember where you heard it. Become allies. Uh, thank you both to both of you.